Your inner purpose is to awaken. That is an essential part of the purpose of the whole. The universe and its emerging intelligence. Your outer purpose can change over time. Finding and living in alignment with your inner purpose is the foundation for fulfilling your outer purpose. That one took me a while to, to digest as I was going through it. You know, we, if we were created by uh, God as uh, God's divine children, and it's our destiny to be companions and co-creators with him throughout eternity, at least according to the Edgar Casey readings, we might call that, in looking at it from this filter through Eckhart Tolle, we might call that our inner purpose. While the outer purpose is to patiently work with whatever we find at hand to manifest God's love in whatever we do. All right? So... If we're looking at this in terms of your outer purpose can change over time. So when we have one lifetime to another, one job to another, one spouse to another, one, you know, one friendship to another, all of those things can wind up having what we do in the outer purpose and in our interactions with the universe, that changes over time. Okay, but what is the inner purpose? It's the essential part of the whole the universe and its emergent intelligence. We are always trying to awaken who we are and always keep in mind that we are the divine children and siblings of a God of unconditional love. The ego will always try to add awakening and enlightenment to itself as its most prized possession. In so doing, the ego becomes bigger and is itself more important than such things. Isn't that true? If you wind up owning, you know, you feel like I own this thing. So therefore, I, you know, it's one of my trophies that I have out there. And if this is something that I own and control, then I must be even greater than what it is, right? So greatness is a mental abstraction and a favorite fantasy of the ego. The paradox is that the foundation for greatness is honoring the small things of the present moment instead of pursuing the idea of greatness. Now, the, uh, uh, I think I, re oh, of course, Casey uh, definitely quoted the Bible when he was talking about if you want to be the master, you know, if you want to be the Messiah, the master, the savior, you must be the servant of all as well. And that was at the Last Supper. You remember where he got down and he washed the, uh, the feet of the, of the uh, disciples. So if you think of all of the earthly rulers, not Jesus, but the earthly rulers throughout history, they paid an awful lot of attention to conquering the earth as well as all of their perceived enemies, right? So they're like, I'm going to beat them up and take them over and control this. But how much attention did they pay to the plight of their own people? That they had people within their own ranks that were hungry or those that were injured. And, you know, they went into war and they said, oh, sucks to be you. You got your arm cut off. I can't use you anymore. All right. But God knows the number of hairs on the head of each one of us. And he supplies every need that we have. The Bible tells us that as well in case he quotes it. So uh, such attention to the tiniest detail from our greatest servant, who would be Jesus slash God, is absolutely true greatness. All right. So when we're, we're talking about what is greatness here, greatness is when you take care of your neighbor, when you see that you, where you can be of service, and you take those small steps in order to be of service to other folks like that. Is greatness being able to say, I am ruler of the world? No, because then you're going to die and then you're not. <laughs> so then it's all over. And it's, uh, you know, when you see, I, I love that buffer sticker. It says, he who dies with the most toys wins. You're going... Wins what? <laughs> you got nothing to show for it, but yet there it is. 